quiet, calculated, precise. Ask anyone at Cordesco's Chess Center and they'll tell you that chess takes practice, determination, and skill. And everyone has a different reason to compete in Broome County's third annual chess tournament. There are beautiful ideas involved, visually, um, calculating ideas. Um, when I say beautiful, it's aesthetically pleasing. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's more than fun. It's rewarding. And there's a, s a social aspect to it also. The chess people are great. And others say... When you're a kid, between now thousands, we used to play thousands and thousands of games. Used to be a chess club at the YMCA downtown. It's fun because it's a challenge. But for Noah Drum, chess is a passion that he's had since he was five years old. You have to sit down and actually take the time to learn it. And once you play your first game, then you pretty much remember the rules. Yeah. But it's kind of hard because there's different moves you can do. Noah and Dan both agree that chess is a great thing for kids to learn. It's fun, it helps you think, and it gets you out of the house. You have to have skills in playing it. It's not something you just know because it's more constructive than just watching TV or playing video games. From its believed origins in the 6th century to practically being standard on most computers now, this mathematical game isn't just for pros. You have to have patience and discipline and really think your moves ahead of time and really see the consequences of your action. I think it's very uh, a very good activity for kids. And whether you know what castling is or not. This here? Yes. And then I do king right there. Chess is a game that both young and old can excel at, and Dan's dad says that he's already doing great. Those older brothers, watch out. Here he comes. 64 squares, 32 pieces, and lots of fun. In Binghamton, Elise McAlanis, YNN. Well, folks, another great tournament. The 2015 Tradewise Gibraltar Chess Festival. We can play it in Gibraltar. Unbelievable scenery. Gibraltar is an amazing place, amazing place. World-class players, one of the top-rated opens in the world. Carl Nakamura, uh, Topalov, ex-world champion, Huey E. Fon, you name it, they're there. Oh, a whole lot of English players, you name it, they're all over the world. And they all come here to the Gibraltar once a year. For the Gibraltar Chess Festival 2015, from January 26th through February 15th, 2015. Don't miss any of these great games. Hi folks, John Cordisco here. Round seven of the Gibraltar Chess Festival, the Masters section. Between two players, I don't really usually, I shouldn't say never, but very rarely cover. Victor Bulligan, top grandmaster as white, rated over 2,600. And Lawrence Trent, you probably know Lawrence from all the different tournaments he travels all over the world. I mean, that's that's the job I want. I want I want to be Lawrence Trent. So Lawrence, if you hear this, I want to be you, buddy. I met Lawrence briefly at Millionaire Chess in Las Vegas last year in 2014, and talked to him for a minute. And I said to him, uh, "Gosh, I've watched you and Nigel Short and other commentators uh, hundreds and hundreds of hours." And he looked at me and he smiled and he went, "Apparently, you have too much free time on your hands." And he laughed. Anyway, folks, it's an interesting game. It's a very, very interesting ending. Bolagon is white. Lawrence Trent is black. It's going to be in English. Let's get to it. E6, A3. A3 is interesting. It's uh, one of the top moves in the computer. Now it's number two, Queen A4, but A3 is interesting. Bishop G7. Bishop. I kind of like this setup already. Trent Castles, Bulagon goes E3. Looking to, of course, grab the center here. B6, Bishop B2, C5. So he's so Trent's challenging right away on the queen side. Boy decides the castle. Mine C6. About an even game. Minute advantage, if any, for White. D4. There he goes. He's finally going. Lawrence goes d6. I think that's a good choice. b5. Hitting his knight. Knight comes back. Or I should say knight goes to... Oh. Yep. a5. D takes. Sorry about that. Got a little messed up. D takes. Knight blocks. 
as you can see, of course, didn't want to trade Queens. He wanted the knight to go there first. But the bishop, queen c2, develops the knight and avoids the trade of the queens. Not too bad. Now, this poor knight over here is a little, little screwy. He really has nowhere to go. He can't be challenged, at least not yet, by a bishop here. Queen e7. Interesting, though, if he had challenged that bishop, but none of the moves on the computer show that. It's all rook moves, and that's the move that Balagun picked. Knight. Interesting. Interesting choice. Knight e8 was the choice to expose. He decided to go to h5. Six and one, half dozen of another. Knight to e5, blocking that, at least temporarily. Bishop takes. Now... Computer also likes bishop takes. I always, I hate like hell to give up, especially a fee and kettled bishop, to give it up for a knight when my opponent has the same color bishop, and that bishop's going to rule the roost. But he made the right choice. Bishop takes. Queen g5. About an even game. Minute, tiny advantage for black. So Lawrence is, is doing well. He's hanging in there. Lawrence is rated 27, or excuse me, 2470. And Bulligan is rated 26.08. And I know Lawrence has been trying. He's talked about it at length uh, when he does commentary. He's looking for his, his GM norms. He's desperately trying. Bishop G3. You know, I'm a passer. I probably would have taken the knight on H5. But the queen would have taken. So what the heck. Bishop comes back. Knight takes, H-pawn takes, Queen E5. Still an even game. Lawrence is okay. I mean, even still, if Lawrence can draw this with black, I believe that's still a GM norm for him. Bishop F3, challenging that bishop directly. Rook comes over. Oddly enough, the computer likes G4. And, or bishop takes B7, and then knight takes. Besides to put the rook on e1, which is another good move. Now this is an interesting move from Lawrence. h5, the computer likes. Queen to f5. He decided to go king to f8. Maybe got a little spooked. I'm not really sure why. Big on h5. After bishop takes, knight takes, knight f3. He's okay. It's an even game. Looking here, and it's it's also the computer move. I'm a little surprised. And that's g4. It just cuts off the scope of that bishop. But I guess it's really not going anywhere anyway. I mean, where's he going to go? Here? I mean, there's really no place to go. He wants to keep him there to freeze this bishop. He wants him to take, and he'd love to be able to de develop the knight at the same time. H6. Finally, finally Bulligan trades. Lawrence takes. F4. Half point advantage for white, but I still think Lawrence is okay. I mean, eventually he's going to get the knight here. Come up. Queen G7. Backs off the queen. Queen c7 was the computer's choice. Queen g7. He's just probably getting a little spooked. We're on move 23, and, and he's still holding his own. Small advantage for white, half a pawn. Knight f3. And this is the move that really surprised me. He put the king back. For some reason, he just... I don't think he felt secure, to be honest with you. And when he moved them there, it probably was a mistake. But the waste of tempo, I'm not really sure if that's a good idea. Rook takes. Rook takes. Rook d8. Knight e5. Rook takes. Queen takes was the computer suggestion. Now you got queen knight endings, which are kind of nightmarish. But after king to g8, queen e4. And this is a move that really surprised me. 
and the computer didn't like it at all, even though it's the computer's second choice. Knight to a5. And for the life of me, I can't figure where the knight's going. I really can. Let's go back here. The computer likes f6. And second choice, believe it or not, now is the third choice, is knight to a5. F6 might have been a little better. It, it's interesting. But Lawrence decided to go knight to a5. Knight to e5. And this is where Lawrence, I think, starts to lose a little bit. I'm not sure if he was in time trouble or on move 26. 40 moves is the time control. Rook A to C8 looks pretty good. Rook A to B8, you know, even F5. Lawrence decides to go Queen to F6. And the computer didn't like that at all. At all. And what happens is, now there's Rook to D7. Now he's got problems. Rook takes. Computer was looking at Knight takes C4, then after Queen takes... Rook takes, knight takes, queen e7. It's a piece for a pawn. It's still over. Rook takes d7, knight takes d7, queen to d8. I mean, the only problem is, is knight on a5, it looks like, but that's not his problems at all. Rook to d1, guarding the knight. I mean, Lawrence is in a bad spot now. and I've been in this spot a million times. It just feels horrible. Rook goes to c8. What else can he do? Again, might take c4 as the last chance to counterplay, but g5, h takes, and now queen to e5. Now the threat is, of course, check. Discovery on the queen, and the queen's guarding this spot. What else can he do? Queen c7, maybe. He goes queen e7. And it's just over. Just over. Knight checks. King f8. Now try to find the winning move for white. Stop the video now. I like the move a lot. In fact, it's not even on the list. The computer. the computer likes queen takes g5, rook d7, all killing, all, all murderous. And he goes knight to d5. The best move was queen takes g5 probably. But knight to d5 is just prettier, a lot prettier. And that's where poor Lawrence, Lawrence Trent resigned. Give you an idea what would have happened after f6. Knight takes... Pawn takes, knight takes, pawn takes, pawn takes, pawn takes, rook to d7. It's over. A rook for two pawns. Anyway, tough break for Lawrence. I still like you, buddy. I still want your job. Anyway, folks, that's an, a game from round seven in the Gibraltar Chess Festival, the master section. I hope you enjoyed it. I want you all to remember, if you think chess is just a game, you're not playing it right. Take care, folks. Bye-bye. Yes is a timeless game and some would call it a universal sport. One businessman appreciates it so much that he started a competition here at home. Action News reporter Alice Majuri introduces us to John Cordisco and his chess championship visiting his corner of the southern tier. I was around as a teenager when Bobby Fischer won the world championship back in the early 70s and I got hooked on playing it then and once you're hooked you're always hooked for the rest of your life. Once you're reeled in where do you play in Broome County? Cordisco invites all ages to his corner store. That it isn't like any other sport where your physical or your age determines, you know, who plays what. You can have an eight-year-old. In fact, my first annual, I had a 82-year-old play an eight-year-old, and the eight-year-old won. And it could happen again. Eight-year-old Daniel Wright is matched up against Cordisco. Dad says he learned from the best. I play, but uh, not at not at his level. <laughs> his older brothers. To the point where he was beating them, they said, "You need to go play in a tournament." So, we're here today to try it out. 
Win or lose, Daniel is happy to play, and Roger content to watch. You watch a chess tournament, you don't see a lot of activity there, but uh, mentally there's a lot of activity going on, and, and it's just really exciting to see him being able to compete at this level. It teaches them a lot of things, uh, how to plan, how to look at things, how actions have consequences. Uh, you make a bad decision and how it affects you. I teach them a little bit of patience because usually kids are a little impatient, adults too. The chess set, a teaching tool and a universal symbol. Anywhere, any language, you show them a chess set and they know what it is. In Binghamton, Alice Majuri, WBNG-TV, Action News. Well, Cordisco invites you to come in and play for fun or for the experience. Play resumes tomorrow starting at 10 in the morning, but you should show up around 9.30.